Hello everybody. I'm going to do a video showing you my new motor scooter. It is a Suzuki Bergman 200. It is a 2014 model. However, I purchased it in May 2016. It's new. It's just one that the dealer had around for a year or two. Didn't get sold. It's only got about 400 miles on it. And I wanted to tell you about some things that I like about it and some things I don't like about it. So maybe that will help you in deciding whether or not this is the scooter for you. The things that I do like about it are the things that you'll probably find on any scooter. The number one benefit is the storage. Beginning with the what you might call glove compartment has room for storage on this side and you'll see there is a 12 volt outlet right there and I have plugged into that a USB so you can charge up your cell phone or anything else that you have this is a device that you put on the right here you put it right there and then that way no one can roll your bike around prevent theft because without it even if the front wheel is locked people can still roll it away now on this other side there's room for a bottle of water, glasses, gloves, other things like that. There is also a small compartment over here that is not a locking compartment. It's a small one. You can put things there that's only going to be there temporary that you don't need locked up. The control panel has a speedometer and the tachometer and the digital display in the middle shows the mileage it's got 480 miles on it it's got a clock there and then that 72.2 <laughs> is supposed to be the miles per gallon that it's getting although it never seems to get anywhere lower or higher than 72 I got to figure out why that really doesn't vary no matter how I drive and then right above that is the fuel gauge and that yellow light shows it has the ABS and then to open the seat compartment you turn this it's a little tricky to figure out but it opens up the seat which has room for a helmet possibly even two helmets I think will fit in it so there's room in there to put stuff that you go shopping you put some bags you put everything carefully in it and you can actually put a lot of stuff in it and I got the, this scooter because mainly because of the storage that motorcycles do not have I'm planning on selling my car and I'm just going to have my motor home and my motor scooter and the scooter would be mounted on a rack on the back of the motor home so with the scooter when I'm in a town or someplace I can drive around to go shopping or to go to restaurants things like that that you don't want to drive the motor home to this is a Bergman 200 it also comes in a 400 and a 650. Now, I really wanted to get the 400. I had my heart set on that. But then I decided that I wanted to mount a rack on the back of the motorhome that will only hold 500 pounds on the trailer hitch. The trailer hitch on the motorhome is rated for 500 pounds. 
So this weighs about 370. The rack itself weighs about 100. So that's pretty close to the 500. On the Bergman 400, it would be a total, I think, of about 650 pounds. And I was afraid that would just be too much for the trailer hitch. So I decided to go down to the 200. And really, I don't need it for a lot of highway traveling. It's pretty much just for driving around town. So it's a pretty neat scooter. It's got a nice design, and I like the ones that don't have a big floorboard. You can see here, it's got a place to put your feet along the bottom, and then you can a footrest up on top where you can stretch your legs out a little further. And then right here is the gas tank. Now I wish though that it was a little higher here in a larger gas tank. The gas tank is 2.8 gallons, which is not a lot, but then on the other hand, the thing gets 70 to 80 miles a gallon. So 2.8 gallons will last you quite a while, actually. But I would kind of like to have a bigger gas tank, and I would be just fine with this being up like about there in order to have a higher gas tank, larger gas tank. Now, the disadvantages of it, the main problem is the shifting between neutral and drive and one of the things about this bike is in order to start it you have to have the brake on or it won't start when you try to press the starter button you have to have the brake pressed to allow it to start and the purpose of that is to prevent someone from starting the, the motor the electric motor which starts the engine and they have it auto immediately just dart forward. That's what they want to prevent. However, in this bike, that's not physically possible because when you start the bike, it starts it in neutral. And in order to take off, just to get your first few inches going, you have to rev it up to about 4,000 RPM which I think is a lot. So <laughs> with neutral, it being in neutral until it gets up to 4,000 RPM, there's no chance of the thing getting out of control before you get started. So that's kind of a silly thing. And with it requiring 4,000 RPM to take off, to me is really a problem because you really have to rev the engine a lot to get it up to that and then that doesn't leave much room between 4,000 and 7,000 in the break-in period you're only supposed to go 7,000 later you can go 9,500 and at 7,000 rpm you can only, it would be about 55 miles an hour And then another problem that, that I don't like is that when you are slowing down, when you slow down to about 10, 15 or so miles an hour, it shifts into neutral. So if you're coming up to a red light, it's going to shift into neutral way before you get to the intersection. But then if you can just take off, you got to give it some gas and then wait a while for it to shift back into drive. With a car, an automatic transmission, it's always in drive and you can normally, and you can change, you can switch it from drive to neutral in a car. So when, it, when the car is in drive, you come to a red light, you stop. To get the car to really stop, you got to hit the brakes and keep the brake on or the car will move forward. Well, in this Bergman, it shifts down the neutral. So it's kind of a problem sometimes. And then when you want to take off, <laughs> again, you got to get up to 4,000 in order to take off. I don't like that. 
And then another thing is that when I'm going downhill, a big long hill, I like to pull in the clutch, shift it into neutral, so that you can coast downhill. There's some places where I've coasted for like a, a mile or so. And when you put it in neutral, you can coast at a pretty good speed. But in this bike, you can't put it in neutral. You have to leave it in gear. So you're going to be dragging on the engine while you're trying to coast. So those are some of the things I don't like about it. A stronger engine would be better, the 400. I would recommend the 400, unless you're like me, where you really need to have a low weight bike in order to put it onto a rack. But it's gonna be really handy in driving around when I don't own a car. I'm not gonna tow a car behind my motorhome. I have no desire to do that, but I do need a way to get around without driving the motorhome everywhere. So put it on the rack and that's going to be really handy. When I go shopping, I got plenty of stories to put stuff. You could also hang some bags or something down from here. If you need more room, you can hang bags down here. It's going to be pretty neat. Got a few disadvantages, like I said, but overall, I think it's a pretty good choice for a situation like mine, maybe a situation like yours. You might want to give it a try. Yeah, if you like motorbikes and a motorcycle doesn't quite fit what you need, maybe a scooter will. Okay. See you next time.